There's a lot of speculation going on right now about what happens if the COOF returns? What happens if there's another worldwide pandemic, in which case everyone decides to lock down again? Specifically, what happens to Alaska real estate if that happens? Well, my name is Jamin Gerker. I'm an associate real estate broker in the state of Alaska, and my mission is to help you to build an intentional and significant legacy for yourself and your family by coaching in real estate. And today, I'm going to do my best to answer that question for you based on my experience and based just on the information we can see on the ground. And keep in mind, this is just going to be my best guess. 100% could be wrong on every single point here. So I just want to start off by saying that I don't have a crystal ball. These are just going to be ideas and theories. And at the very end, I'm going to talk about some variables that are kind of wild cards where I don't know how it's going to impact anything. So we'll go ahead and get into all of that in just a minute. Before we do, though, make sure you give this video a like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And without further ado, let's go and jump into today's video. First off, looking at Alaska, I am not sure if there was a return of the COOF if everybody would shut down again. Like, I really just am not convinced that would happen in Alaska. In Anchorage, there was certainly a much longer shutdown than what there was in the Matsu Valley. And even in Anchorage, there was some severe pushing back to the lockdowns. We had a lot of businesses that kind of just rebelled and said, no, we're not going to do this anymore. It kind of got comical there at the end where the city finally just said, we've decided it's all all good now you can all walk around like normal and everyone was like cool been doing that for like a month at this point but sure thanks anyway <laughs> so i'm not really convinced that if they went and try to do lockdowns again if they would really be effective that's kind of number one not sure if lockdowns would happen again now, if they did go and enforce a bunch of lockdowns, what I would expect to start seeing at that point is, again, there would be a lot of unemployment. And this time, it would be different, though, because not only do you have the unemployment, but also you have the inflation that we weren't fighting then at the time. That being said, though, a lot of companies have really adapted doing some kind of a virtual or a hybrid version of like the virtual and then in person. So I'm not really convinced that this would just be a complete death knell for a lot of businesses like what it was before. We've kind of had to adapt quite a bit. Now, I will say I'm not a huge, huge fan of doing everything virtually. And I know some of you are going to be um, incredibly incensed at that. You can't just have an opinion on this uh, without somebody torching you one way or the other. I am not the biggest fan ever, and that's just because a lot of what I do is very collaborative. And so you can't really get the best results there if you're not in person collaborating and talking with other people. It's very difficult to do that if you're doing everything virtually. So I do know people will adapt. We've already had first go through with this and having to adapt as companies and being able to do stuff virtually. So I think better position this time if that were to happen, if the COOF was to come back for us to be able to adapt and pivot in that direction if we had to. Big question I get specifically from landlords and investors and such is would a moratorium come back saying that renters could not be evicted for no payment of rent? And the answer is I just don't know. Um, I do know in the past epidemic that we had that very, very private landlords actually had issues with tenants not paying. Now, there were some pretty blatant instances, abuse of the system, which is really disgusting and despicable um, that did happen and just people like, oh, I haven't paid for my rent in like two years. Here I am on a vacation in Hawaii and yeah, I'm just living that hustle life. It's like, it's, it's so wrong. Like surely anyone can look at that and understand that's wrong. Like that's not just working the system. Like you crossed a big moral line here, but that was very, very rare. And the, usually the norm was that people were going to be paying for their rent or they were going to work with their landlord and make it happen. Very few private landlords I saw had issues with it. It was when you got to these bigger commercial properties where they're taking in thousands and thousands of people where you're going to start seeing some stuff like that. Speaking of moratoriums, would a moratorium come back saying that people don't have to pay for their mortgages? And possibly, I think a lot of people who jumped on and started taking advantage of the moratorium on mortgages really didn't come out ahead. It was just something that seemed really slick where they could go and do it. And um, I mean, at the time, no one really knew what was going on. Um, I would say probably try to steer clear of it as best you can, just because they take that money and they tack it on the back end of the mortgage. So it's not like you just pause your payments and then you actually do end up paying some interest on those payments that you missed. 
and those can compound pretty quickly. So I've actually known some people that took advantage of that and it took them to the cleaners when we went to sell their property later. So unless it is absolutely 100% necessary, I would say avoid the moratoriums if they did come back. Um, the way it shook out last time is just the market shot through the roof. If people did have a problem with making payments, they could just sell the property and you would never know the property was distressed. Let's take a break here real quick, though. Um, for those who've been watching for a bit, you do know that I host a podcast called the Alaskan Journey Podcast, where I talk with people who have recently moved up here and kind of get their pros, their cons, what they like, what they don't like, what tips they have, all the good stuff. So make sure you go take advantage of that a great resource to hear from people who have recently moved up here. And also, we have a monthly meetup for those of you who have recently moved up here and all the info about the upcoming events and stuff we'll be doing is going to be in the Alaska Monthly Meetup Facebook group and the link for that is going to be in the description section down below. Now, let's go and finish up just uh, going through some predictions and some thoughts I have about how the COOF did return to this market, how exactly the Alaska real estate would be impacted. Now, the million dollar question that a lot of people are asking is if the COOF did return, would we in fact end up having to go and uh, lower interest rates again the way that they did it before? And wouldn't that make houses so much more affordable and be the ideal time to jump in? This is going to sound against the grain here, but I kind of hope that interest rates don't drop down to as low as they were before. Maybe adjusting a little bit if uh, we do get to that point. But if they suddenly drop down, I suspect what's going to happen is unless you have a big pile of cash just on hand ready to go, then it's going to make purchasing a property well nigh impossible. And let me explain this a little bit. If you right now, home prices are so high just because there's so little inventory, and that's with the interest rates being so high. If suddenly the interest rates come down, everyone comes out of the woodworks and they're trying to buy homes, then it's going to become very, very competitive. And unless you have like a big pile of cash in addition to the down payment and everything else, then it's going to be very difficult for people to get into homes because not only do we have the competition, which we had that before, but also we have the lack of inventory now versus when we had it before, which it seemed really low at the time. Like that was historic lows. Now we're actually lower than what we were then. If you add on top of that a high demand, you can see how it will become pretty tough unless you have a big pile of cash just sitting there in addition to the down payment and the earnest money and all that, unless you have like a big pile of cash, it's going to be very difficult to get in and actually make any traction if the interest rates suddenly drop so low. So you would think I would just be an opportunist and be like, yes, I can't wait for the interest rates to drop and let's go. But I know it's if that happens, home prices are going to absolutely shoot through the roof just because it's very basic supply and demand and this is just basic economics doing its thing. Now let's talk about some of these wildcard variables I was discussing before. Some of the stuff I would like to know is, okay, if the COOF returned, would that impact our PCS season up here in Alaska? Because we do get quite a bit of our people coming and going, our military, like getting their PCS orders in and out. And if that really slowed everything down, just because the inventory is already so tight, if that suddenly happened, then we could definitely see slowing down of the market even more if that did happen. Another variable I would like to know is because so many people have been vaccinated at this point, would it be enough for governments to take a bit of a chill pill and just say, hey, the population is mostly vaccinated and we'll be okay without shutting everything down and you know putting huge restrictions on the economy again? Another really big question that I want to know is would the entire tourism industry shut down again for an entire year? And that's, that's a big problem for Alaska because so much of our industries are kind of dependent or supportive of the tourist industry. So if that did happen, that would have a pretty big impact. Um, I do know some small towns that my like COVID never really stopped in some of these smaller southeastern Alaska towns. And there were actually like some people out there picketing and saying, oh, we don't want cruise ships coming in here anymore. It's like, do you not understand how you exist? Okay, that is pinnacle of stupidity that you would be out there telling the very people who are giving you jobs and homes and everything. Like these are the people that are making this possible for you and you are so dumb you don't even realize you can't even recognize that. But no, COVID never stopped in some of these small towns. And if it, the COOF actually did come back, then you would actually see that some of these smaller towns would really probably go bottom up. Because unfortunately, 
the common sense doesn't really reign very well in some of these places. And if that happened, they would probably try to shut themselves off even more. But there are other areas, industries that are supportive of the tourist industry across the entire state that would suffer as a result as well, which does put more pressure on kind of the day-to-day the -day person. That being said though, a lot of people who are in the tourist industry, I'd have to see the stats. I don't know how many of them are seasonal, like they just come up here to work during the summertime and then they leave. And how many of them are full-time where they actually live up here, have homes, like shop, pay taxes, all that stuff up here. I just don't know when it comes to stuff like that, but it would have an impact on the tourist industry. One of the biggest variables, it's kind of a wild card to me, is just thinking how Canada is going to react to it. And it sounds a little off topic, but actually it's very relevant. And the reason for that is the ferry system right now that goes from Bellingham up to Alaska, where usually they would drop you off in Whittier or Valdez, and you could just drive a couple hours to get to the South Central Alaska. That route is currently not open. And the reason for that is because the Kinnicott and the Matanuska vessels are not, they're currently in dock being repaired and being upgraded. And they're going to be out really for, well, the Matanuska for the foreseeable future. The Kinnicott is supposedly going to be up and going in November. They just have to find a crew, which again, we don't know when that's going to be. So it could be a while as well. And if neither of those ships are up and going, that means the only way to get into and out of Alaska is going to be going through Canada, at least for all your household goods. And if you're looking to make a move and Canada suddenly shuts down the border, you're stuck unless you have the money to pay for a moving company to go and do that. So seeing how Canada reacts to a new wave of COOF, if it did happen, is going to be something I would really be paying attention to. So wrapping all this up, really the way I think the market would react, we had another round of uh, another pandemic that came around, is I really suspect we would probably see a lot more intensity in the market. I know a lot of people are thinking, oh, that means interest rates will go down. It's not even necessarily something you should want, because if it does, that's going to create a ton of competition. And if you thought the way prices jump before was intense wait till you see what happens when we have the same level of competition for a much smaller pool this time. So that's not going to be good. Additionally, I think we would have a lot of impacts on the economy that would start being felt by people who are uh, kind of working a lot of these day-to-day -day jobs that would get laid off as a result of it. Um, if you can work a virtual job it's probably not an entry level position anywhere and it's really not going to be those folks that whose employments are going to be impacted at least immediately it also comes down to how long this would go on some places like it just it just went on and on and on and on other places like two weeks you're up and going again like nothing happened we just don't know one way or the other and i'm not giving endorsements for one strategy or the other we'll just see how this whole thing plays out even if it does but if the COOF did return to Alaska, I would definitely be more in favor. I'm definitely leaning more towards thinking it would potentially be something that would really upset things again if the interest rates came down. Now, if it didn't, I don't think a whole lot of people are going to be stampeded one direction or the other. If suddenly the interest rates came down, then as a result of the coup, then I believe we would see a big change. But these are all predictions. We don't know for certain. So who knows? Maybe I'll come back to this video in a couple of years and be like, man, what was this dude thinking? But that's what we're seeing right at the moment. So thanks for watching. And if you have any theories of your own, make sure to drop them down below and we'll see you next time.